Hello everybody and welcome. We are in lovely Milan at the lovely Mafra place and we're with the lovely Reggie Cox. Uh, today we are going to go and have a little whistle stop tour through the factory, through the storage and through all the facilities they've got here and ending up in the chemistry lab where there are going to be chemists and we're going to talk about chemistry. So that should be fun. Come and join us. Hello and welcome to the secret labs behind MAFRA where we make the Labo Cosmetica range. Yeah. You develop yeah. the range as well. Yeah, a and sort of cosmetics for your cars. <laughs> exactly. Um, and these two chaps here are the chemists, the brains behind the range. Um, why don't you just introduce yourselves to our watchers? Okay, you start. Um, everybody. <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm uh, Ricardo. I'm uh, the R&D developer of uh, Labo Cosmetica. And uh, he is Giacomo. And Hi, everybody. We are the Labo Cosmetica team, and uh, we develop uh, a lot of uh, products, hold the line, from detergents to coatings, sealants, and, and so on. And what I wanted to do is talk about pH, because pH is a topic that regularly comes up in detailing, um, and my knowledge of it is like this compared to you guys. Yeah. So I tell you what, who invented pH and when did it sort of become a thing? Okay, we want to start you. Uh, okay, just for uh, clear things, uh, we know that uh, we have a water solution and basically water molecules can be, in, in room temperature, can be split into things, uh, protons uh, and uh, other atoms, uh, ions called. And those two things uh, uh, balanced together, they give us the value of pH. If there are more protons, uh, uh, we can say the solution is acid and therefore pH goes down. If we have more uh, OH minus, uh, this is the counterpart of the water, if uh, that counterpart prevails, you will have higher pre uh, pH alkalinity. Uh, both having too many of the two species, uh, so if you have an alkaline pH or acid pH is dangerous for a delicate solution because those ions can interact with regular matter and they act and what we see is uh, the uh, the sparkling on the surface means uh, those uh, uh, chemical uh, those ions are going to degradate our surfaces and the uh, damage could be permanent of course that's why we want uh, uh, ideally that those two species are um, 
balancing one to yeah. each other uh, are present in the solution in the same concentration. So you have a neutral pH 7. Of course, yes. Uh, actually, uh, chemists uh, all over the world use uh, pH uh, as a standard measure parameter to evaluate uh, solutions, liquid solutions, alkaline solutions or acid solutions, um, to of course uh, understand uh, the, the, the characteristics of the products uh, and of course uh, the causticity also of the products on, the, on, the, on metal panels and uh, metal surfaces. Um, so this is now, uh, after 110 years of mm -hmm. history of pH, uh, uh, became, uh, pH became a standard measure for the laboratories all over the world. And so pH was invented, you were saying 1909, was it? Yes, uh, from Carlsberg uh, Beer. Uh, That's brilliant, from uh, a brewery, lab, basically. In, inside the Carlsberg Beer uh, yeah. Laboratories. And so the H stands for hydrogen. Yes, H stands for, now um, in easy words, it stands for concentration of uh, hydrogen ions. Mm -hmm. And uh, P, uh, there is a, li a little uh, cool history about P because uh, you can find on uh, on websites uh, that the P stays could stays for stands for uh, power power, mm -hmm. power of hydrogen. That is cool uh, if you heard these words, but uh, this is not uh, the, the real yeah, meanings. Uh, but P was uh, only the name of uh, the solution uh, um, identified with the P letters because uh, 100 years ago P and Q was uh, standard letters uh, using. Uh, um, algebra and maths. It was a sim <laughs> so symbols, by exactly. symbols. Exactly. Actually, exactly. P stays for the minus logarithmic function. Yes, exactly. That's why you have a range between uh, 0 and 14. Because you have a concentration which is a very, very, very low number. Mm -hmm. And so you apply the minus logarithm function and you have uh, an, uh, a natural number between 1 and 14. But from a detailing point of view, and yeah. as you alluded to earlier, is that um, if you have something that's too acidic or too alkaline, it can potentially damage a surface exactly. irreparably in certain cases. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but what I wanted to cover slightly is because uh, Labo create quite a few acidic products and quite a few alkaline products, yes, indeed. but presented as safe to use. And we've seen demonstrations where on aluminium plate, um, yeah. You put some of the pH two uh, next to something else with pH two. So we used uh, what was it? Sort of acid, sulfuric acid, wasn't it? That you used? Yes, yeah, sulfuric or acid, or hydrochloric or acid. acid. Inorganic acids, yes. Yeah, so. It's a very powerful acid, and and that had a similar pH to the product, but of course that was fizzing away on the yeah. aluminium, yeah. and the product wasn't. And so, despite being a similar pH, what is the difference between those two ones, the ones that damaged, i.e., the, the acid, and the the product? Why does the product not damage the metal? Actually, it's the uh, what I said earlier because uh, the the, num the the number is just value it comes from uh, a mathematical interpretation. The minus logarithm function just uh, um, makes everything flat. If I have a very high concentration of protons or just a small amount of protons, the minus log function just flats out the upcoming number. Okay. So both of those solutions will have a natural number as a result, pH 0 or 1. But that number is, really does not mean uh, the real concentration of the protons inside the solution. That's the, the real deal. So even if we know the exact, amount, the exact number of pH, we are not aware of the real concentration of protons inside that solution. When using just pH as the measure. Yes. Exactly. So, so this is a, in, in, in short, essentially, pH 2 isn't necessarily going to be dangerous because exactly. it could be pH 2 but at a very low concentration. Equally, yes. pH 4 could be more dangerous than pH 2 if the exactly. pH 4 is at a high concentration. And the same happens in reverse. We were trying uh, with NaOH, wasn't it? Sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide, hydroxide yes. Yeah, yeah, kind of example. Now, sodium hydroxide, yes. Yeah, it, it's not nice stuff. You don't want to yes, drink that. Exactly. No, absolutely not. Just for very high concentrated products, uh, it's very difficult to evaluate uh, the real uh, causticity on uh, without uh, practical practical uh, devices testing. or tests. Of it's, it's not just a matter of pH because yes. uh, there is a, a set of raw materials uh, you can use in your products. Yes. That even if they are uh, neutral pH, they can be dangerous. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, because they are um, different chemical uh, raw materials with different natures. And the natures of the raw materials uh, can cause damage or can prevent damage. So, that. so in short, when you see a product saying it's pH neutral, 
it doesn't necessarily mean it's safe. And when you see a product that says it's quite alkaline or quite acid, they don't necessarily are dangerous. Um, and the other element is in order to achieve a change, so achieve cleaning power, yeah. there are various different ways you can do that. So you can do that from sort of chemical side. Explain the different, the different systems that... Therefore, it's surfactants, uh, mm -hmm. type of surfactants, uh, other cleaning agents uh, and so on. So we use, of course, uh, uh, the pH, so the alkalinity uh, basis and acids uh, to increase uh, and balance the detergency, the cleaning power, the general cleaning powers of our products. products. So again, when you're talking about um, uh, the neutral products, don't presume they're safe, and the alkaline ones and acid ones don't presume they're dangerous. And in terms of what they actually do, in terms of how strong their cleaning power is, yes, exactly. um, generally speaking, you may have to be slightly acidic or slightly alkaline to achieve that, but it doesn't mean that they're going to do damage to your paintwork. Um, that's more down to what these guys do, and that's why they test it, and that's why it's safe. So um, that's an interesting little insight into pH. If you're going on a first date, for example, you could bring that topic up. I imagine that would work very well. Um, or if you have friends and family over and you want them to leave quite quickly, you can also describe the situation. Anyhow, don't, don't worry about pH. <laughs> that's, that's the, the so, yeah, yeah. There are other things to worry about, much bigger things. Anyway, thank you very much, guys. You're it's welcome. been you're welcome. Thank, thank you for letting us in. We're joined here by the beautiful Reggie Crop. No, we probably will not call him the beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying he's not beautiful? That's not very nice. <laughs>